living right next door to the side. Right here. Right here.
thank you for coming on this lovely warm day. And thank you for being all masked, which is so important right now. If you cannot hear me, please come a little bit closer. And uh, I'm gonna stand here so that I can be on the video as it goes out to everyone. Before I present the flag of our country to a service member, we're gonna do symbolic tearing of clothing. I do have a knife here if it doesn't start at the bottom itself, but first we do a blessing. As we symbolically tear the heart, we affirm at the same time that the goodness of Howard's life is the guarantees now with God. So the blessing ends Diana Ahmed, which we do first. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Dayan Ha'amet. Praise to you, Lord our God, King of the universe, the judge of truth. You can tear it yourself, but great. If you can't tear it, I have a little knife here. And I add from the book of Job, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakachi, Shemin Avarach. Lord is given, Lord is taken. Still, praise be the name of the Lord. This time it is traditional to present a flag to a veteran which we'll do it this time. Al Miklamo Yavova Shalom may go in peace to his final place in love with God. Our first prayer of our service will be sung by Cantor Comrade. Esa'enai el Eharim, I lift up my eyes to the mountains, from where does my help come? My help comes from God. Esa'enai. Esa'enai el Eharim, me'oyim, me'oyim yavu of Ecclesiastes, part of which you have here in the booklet. In the words of Ecclesiastes, a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time for dancing and a time for wailing, a time for birthing and a time for dying, a time for speaking and a time for silence, a time for seeking and a time for losing. 
The time of mourning is a complicated time filled with many emotions and memories, both bitter and sweet. We begin our service with the recitation of psalms and prayers, thus linking Howard Cohn's life with the 3,000 year old tradition of the people of Israel and the eternity of God. We walk today through the valley of the shadow of death and we ask for God's goodness and mercy to be with us on the journey the cantor will first sing some verses in Hebrew and English, and then you can follow Rabbi Arian in the English after that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overfloweth, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Rabbi Aaron will lead us in the English. Please join together with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me to lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside the still waters. God restores my soul. God guides me in straight paths for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're now on the left side of the center pulpit. We're ready to go to Psalm 15. We're doing this reading because it captures some of the qualities of Howard's life, living with integrity, doing what is right. A person whose kindness was always there, who never hurt another person. It starts in Hebrew, Mi lecha, mi bahar shecha. Let's read together. Who shall dwell in your sanctuary? Who will abide in your holy mountain? He who lives with integrity, does what is right and speaks the truth, who has no slander upon his tongue, who does no evil to his fellow man. He takes an oath even to his own harm and does not change. Whoever does these things shall stand firm forever. The next Psalm is 128. I select this because I often ask the question, what's the reward for a life of kindness and goodness? It's really not always a wonderful long life, although Howard did was blessed with that. But it's much more the reward of a good life is a spiritual connection, especially to loved ones, to family. And that's what Psalm 128 is about. You can read together. A song of ascents, 
Happy is everyone who reveres the Lord that walks in God's ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. You will be happy and it shall be well with you. Your spouse shall be as a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive saplings around your table. So shall the man who reveres the Lord be blessed. The Lord bless you out of Zion and see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life and live to see your children's children's children may all be well with Israel. Our next reading is a contemporary reading copyrighted by Linda Ellis in 1996. It talks about the dash on the tombstone, which is more important than the year of birth and the year of death. We'll alternate stanzas responsively in the English. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on his tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted at first came the date of his birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. That dash represents all the time that he spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved him know what that little line is worth for it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? But you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that the special death might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? I'm Rabbi Mark Raphael. I was the rabbi of Key Lot Shalom from 1996 to 2012. So I've known Howard for almost 25 years. I knew Howard with Shirley as members of the synagogue, active in the active retirees. And I officiated at Shirley's funeral in May 2012. I actually got to visit Howard a couple of times at the villages at Rockville. I start by saying that Howard with Shirley was so beloved, especially at the active retirees. His quiet warmth, his intelligence, his willingness to serve was always engaging. And he even served for a number of years as the programming vice president and the president of the seniors. At Shirley's funeral, I spoke about their relationship, their mutual devotion. They loved to travel together. They supported and reciprocated each other's love without measure. And as Shirley grew weaker, Howard took care of everything. He made sure her hair, her nails, her skin were always the way she loved. Such amazing, unconditional love. I did see him a couple of times after he moved to the villages. He was weak and the memory was not what it used to be, but the basic personality was always still present. He recognized me, greeted me warmly. We had a lovely, pleasant conversation. And he always wanted to hear more about me than anything about himself. I cherish those sweet moments of connection. So how do we cherish Howard's life? We know that he lived the three essential values that the prophet Micah talks about in chapter six when he said, what is good, what does the Lord require of you? Only to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. This is the legacy of Howard Cohen. He valued justice, opportunity, and equity for every person he was always respectful and kind to everyone without exception. And he walked a life of humble service to community, to friends and to family. We remember and we celebrate today his goodness, which we know continues on. At this point in time, I'll turn over to his children and whatever you want, if you can come over here, I'll move away. You can unmask and be able to share your reminiscence and tribute to your father. Mom, 
my dad was a happy man. He was thoughtful, outgoing, friendly, loyal, compassionate, and gentle. I have never known him to be selfish or deliberately cruel to anyone at any time. He was mom's best friend for almost 62 years. He was born in Pittsfield, Massachusetts on September 18, 1924, and had a very, very happy childhood. My father had a special love for his sister, my aunt Sylvia. She adored her baby brother and took him with her everywhere she went. This adoring relationship lasted throughout their lives. It was a great source of joy and comfort for my dad. From a very early age, dad was smitten with an intense love of art. He once told me that he lived, breathed, thought, and dreamt about art. After serving in World War II, dad attended the New England School of Art in Boston. Soon thereafter, he came to live with his cousins, Jerry and Abby, Abby here in Washington, DC. In January, 1950, he went on a double date with Jerry, whose girlfriend brought a girl for dad to meet. Her name was Shirley Sloshenberg. Shirley was a Washington DC native and worked as a phone operator. He took her dancing at the famous Blue Room in the Omni Shorm Hotel in Washington, DC. They had a lovely time. Mom said he didn't call her for months after that. She was heartbroken, but she didn't know that he was saving for a second date. At the time, my mom lived with her mother in a very small apartment, and dad started coming to dinner there every night. And my mom eventually said to him, we might as well get married. So they did six months later in June 1950. They were married until my mom's death in May of 2012, a very happy 61 years and 11 months. Dad retired at the age of 62 and was finally able to devote his life to his first great love, art. Over the years, he discovered that his love of art had been shared by many wonderful and committed people. And for decades, he belonged to many art and civic organizations in an effort to promote arts in Montgomery County, including the Washington Society of Landscape Painters, one of the oldest and most prestigious art organizations in the area. In 2012, he won a coveted spot as artist in resident at the Arts Barn in the Kentlands. He ended up staying at the Arts Barn another 16 years as a teacher and mentor and he loved every minute of his tenure there. As a teacher, he made many lasting and profound friendships with his colleagues and students. Teaching gave his life purpose and satisfaction. His works are part of the permanent collection of NIH, the city, the Gaithersburg City Government and the Kent Island Federation of Art. And because of his work for the city, September 18, 2014, Dad's 90th birthday was declared Howard, Co Howard Cohen Day in the city of Gaithersburg by then Mayor Sidney Katz. He told me that painting was an obsession and indeed he devoted many hours a day to his craft. He worked in oils, watercolor, charcoal, crayon, and pen and ink. He was an artist whose palette of rich warm tones captured the everyday scenes, the mundane, the forgotten, and out of way places and people and transformed them into beautiful portraits which celebrate life. Likewise, he always tried to see the good in everyone. He was a forgiving man, a man of great feeling who voted for the underdog and was pained by injustice. He was motivated by conscience and love and was often generous to a fault. In January 2009, after my mom was ill for many months, I moved dad and her in with me until she passed in May of 2012. During the years when mom was ill, my father remained a loving and devoted husband and took excellent tender care of my mother. He literally stuck by her side and together we cared for her in our home. Dad was always positive and upbeat, though I know his heart must have been breaking. He was also a wonderful father and has always been there for his kids. He was the kind of father who you, whom you could call on and count on to come to your aid without hesitation. As I'm sure all of you who knew him would agree, my father was a good, decent, and human man with a love of life and laughter, who had a special quality that drew others to him and created long lasting friendships. My brother and I adored both him and my mother and are truly grateful to God for their lives. Their memories will be blessings forever. I wanna thank each of you for your participation today to give something back to him for honoring his memory and showing him he was appreciated, respected, and loved.
Sure. Okay, Mark. Just want to be sure. The Oshav Afar Al Arts Keshehayav Rok Tashuv Al Himashin Tana. The earth inherits that which is mortal, but the spirit returns to God who gave it. This time we're going to participate together briefly in the burial. It's a final act of love and devotion. Uh, if the first part of the ceremony was finding comfort in the liturgy and in the words of the tribute, then this part is a final act of respect for those who've passed, placing a couple of shovelfuls of dirt upon the casket and knowing that we will do this with gentleness and dignity to express our love for Howard. So there are shovels on both ends. If you want to use the back on the first shovelful, you're welcome to do so. Since everyone's gloved, every once in a while I may come over and sanitize the shovel anyway for the COVID extra safe. But as an example, Anybody else? Our next prayer in the program is the memorial prayer. Today happens to be, it doesn't feel like it here, but in Israel it's springtime. Today is actually a holiday called Tu Bishvat, the Jewish holiday of the trees. The almond blossoms are blossoming right now in Israel here at the end of January. And so following the mainstream rabbinic tradition, we don't do the traditional El Rachamim, but the Chazan is going to chant for us now. God is always before me from Psalm 16.
the neck detoured We'll do the moral prayer in the English as you have it here. You're welcome to join me at the bottom of the third page. God, full of compassion, eternal spirit of the universe, we're in perfect rest under the wings of your presence to Howard Cohen, Chaim ben Leib Vibrina, who has entered eternity. Merciful and let him find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. The eternal God is his inheritance. May he truly rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. This time we'll just pause for a moment of silent meditation, reflection. You're also welcome to use the meditation on the back if you like it. And in a couple of seconds, Rabbi Arian will do the final concluding prayer. Our God and God of our ancestors, a thousand years in your sight are as a passing day, an hour of night. The generations come and go while you endure forever. We are always in your hand, Adonai, in death as in life. Help us who mourn the loss of Howard Cohen to look beyond this moment, to realize that death cannot destroy the bonds of your everlasting love. Sustain us with the knowledge afforded by faith that you will not allow us to suffer oblivion. For you, eternal one, have taught us the way of life. Through you, we gain eternity. And let us say, Amen. Is mourners Kaddish. Kaddish, of course, in sanctification, we praise God's goodness and God's holiness here at the cemetery and through 11 months for a parent. What does this mean? As I grapple with its significance, I think what we're talking about is, there is a spiritual continuity to our loved one, which God is the guarantor of. Our physical being ends, but our goodness, our spirituality, our love are passed on generation to generation to generation, perhaps in an eternal cycle. And when we praise God's goodness, we're praising that truth of Howard's goodness continuing into the future. You have it transliterated here. Uh, if anybody needs the Hebrew, I also have Hebrew. We'll join together in praising God with Kaddish. Yit Kadal the Yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah, the Alma Divrach Yerute, the Amlich Malchute, the Chayechon of Yomechon, of Chaye de Hall Beit Yisrael. Bagala uvizman kari viemru amen. Yehesh me rabba mivorach olam ulome omaya. Yit barach the yish tabach, the yit paar viet romum viet nase. The yit hadar viet tale viet talal. Shame de kudisha brihu. La ela min kol bir hata vishirata. Tushbehata venechemata. Damiron the Alma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya. The Chaim Alenu the Alkol Yisrael Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Vimromav. Uya Ase Shalom. 
Aleinu the Alkol Yisrael the Imru. Lieu of flowers, moral contributions can be made to Kihilat Shalom or the charity of the donor's choice. Tonight at Kihilat Shalom, there's an evening minion, which will be the Shiva minion for the family. You need a link, ask the family, ask me, email Rabbi Aaron, any of us can provide you with a link if you'd like to join the family saying Kaddish and a couple minutes afterwards to have an opportunity to share some memories and some words of comfort. Any other announcements I need to make? Then except for the mourners and spouses, if everyone else could just form two lines along the tread. Traditionally, we offer a word of comfort. We say, I'm sorry, I express my condolences. In Hebrew, in English, we say the translation, may God comfort you among the other mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Comfort comes for those who have faith in knowing that there's something more than the physical, the spiritual continues. And comfort comes from friends and family that empathize and support us on these occasions. So in Hebrew, if everybody except for the mourners and wife could form a parallel, two parallel lines, just along the tread will allow the mourners to pass back to the cars and we'll schmooze over there. And that will conclude the service. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.